Hey guys, Mark Paris, Remax Renaissance. Want to give you a market update for the Phoenix market. Inventory is low, prices are starting to stabilize. Foreclosures are down from 2009 and traditional sales are increasing. Now's a great time to buy in Phoenix and we've got a great show for you, so I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Our guest this week is Todd Bookspan. He's the host of Real Talk Arizona on the air Saturdays at 2 p.m. on 960 KKNT. He's also a loan officer with the Bookspan Baker team with Cobalt Mortgage. So please help me in welcoming Todd Bookspan. Welcome, Todd. Thanks, Mark. Happy to be here. Great. Happy to have you. Uh, I understand you're going to be running a marathon soon. Yeah, there's truth to that rumor. My wife and I will be running the New York Marathon on November 6th. And 26 miles. 26.2 miles. Not the half marathon. No, we're doing the real thing. Wow. So I never had run more than 10 miles a few months back, and now we're ready to roll. Yep. Todd actually did the Grand Canyon hike with our guest uh, Scott Gibson from last week, and how did that go? Well, I don't want anyone who's watching it to know it, but I apparently broke the record from last year by 10 minutes and beat in the next fastest person by seven, not so, to brag or anything. So you're ready for the for the marathon? I was planning on just coasting up the hill, and then I got a little motivation with a few miles to go, and uh, had a great time. It was a good group of people, and it was a beautiful day out there. Great. Let's get into interest rates. We're at historic lows. Where do you see them going from here? You know, it's really interesting because in the, the previous times that the Fed's tried to stimulate the economy with quantitative easing, it's actually hurt interest rates. Uh, back in November of 2008, when rates started to go down, it was due to the Fed buying mortgage-backed securities. And since mortgage-backed securities are the bonds that mortgage rates are tied to, it pushed rates down. And then since then, the actions they've taken have really been to support U.S. Treasuries and support interest rates for the overall broad market. And right now, with the latest version of what they did, the twist that they're doing right now, where they're selling their short-term securities to try to force rates on short-term uh, maturities up and buying longer-term securities, one of the things that they're doing is reinvesting their dividends, that their, their earnings from mortgage-backed securities back into mortgage-backed securities. So that's what's keeping rates low right now. And so as long as they continue to do that, which should be through the spring of next year, then I think we'll see, hopefully, continue to see good, good rates. Okay, so rates are staying low. But are we seeing tighter regulations on borrowers? Yes and no. I think that, that one of the things that, that's a big misnomer, I was talking to my cousin in New York last night, he's a doctor, mm -hmm. and he's looking at potentially refinancing his house, and one of his concerns was that he couldn't refinance, and, and that's a regulation why he can't. He's got a loan that's, that's has the, the new loan limits changed October 1st, and they've lowered some of the loan limits here in Arizona. The FHA limit's now 271000 where it was 346 so before. FHA FHA is now two seventy one. Yeah, and fifty dollars. And, and is that going to hinder some people to get loans? That'll definitely hinder people. It's going to make it more expensive because we still can do a three percent down payment loan for someone who's got a high credit score, or a five percent down payment for someone who's got a six twenty credit score. That's just going to be a more expensive loan than the FHA loan would have been. And what's the lowest credit score that you can give a loan to? Currently, six twenty. Six twenty. Six twenty. There are institutions in full disclosure that will go down to a five eighty. However, most of those loans don't really exist. You have in order to have a credit score below between six twenty and five eighty, you normally have had some credit issue that's happened and most of those programs don't allow for those credit issues to let loan. So they're more window dressing to make people feel good, but I don't see as many of those going in actuality. Okay. So with, with our current economy and how things have gone, there's been a lot of people who have either short sold their home or foreclosed. Do you have a program to help get those people back on track so they can buy a home in the next one, two, three years? You know, great question. We run a program called Credit Score Defender, which is really our program. We plug clients in, we review their credit with them um, every three to four months and really look at what we need to do to get them back on track. You know, they all have you know, some credit crisis that happened, bankruptcy, foreclosure, short sale, and our goal is to know when's that time frame down the road that you can buy again and what do we need to do to get you in, in shape before then. And a lot of times people who say, well, I, everything else I've paid on time, I haven't actually gone late on my other bills. Right. The real issue is, is that the bank doesn't always report the short sale or foreclosure correctly, so we want to make sure we get that fixed ahead of time so that when they're excited to buy, they're not left out in the cold. Great. Great information, Todd. Thank you for coming on, and uh, we'll see you again. All right. Thanks, Mark. Good pleasure, guys. All right, it's time for our next segment called Thank You Notes. Thank you. Thank you, Banks, for taking six months to get an answer on a short sale, only to have the buyer find a new home. Thank you. Thank you, thank you federal government for having the loan modification program to help save 1% of homeowners. 
Thank you. That's it for our show today. Next week, we're going to have a lookalike of Sheriff Joe on. So until next week, here's some new beginnings.